So let's now get into some other mistakes, and this is with beneficiary forms. And you know what, some of this seems logical, but we're seeing these mistakes over and over again. Like for example, some of you have IRAs or 401ks where you don't even have a beneficiary form on file. So what happens when you pass, it's like the, it's, there's no person that this is designated to go to. It's a, it's a big, big mistake. Or how about if it's an outdated form? Like you've got your, your prior spouse on there, and you've been married twice and divorced twice since then. You got your first spouse on there and guess what? That spouse is going to receive your IRA or 401k unless you change the beneficiary statement. Right. You got to look at the beneficiary form on file. You have to look at contingent beneficiary. So if you have children, right, you name your spouse and then from there you want to name children or if you have a charity in mind, whatever. There's outdated forms. Now your 401k is an, under ERISA. IRAs are, um, in, in a sense, when it comes to beneficiaries, it doesn't have to go to the spouse. So be careful there. Like Al just said, we see this mistake all the time, is that the, the ex-spouse is still on the form. You might have kids. You want the money to go to the kids, but guess what? It's going to go to the ex-spouse. Hopefully then she, who knows, right? You want, you're dead. You got to make sure that you're tight on all of this stuff when it comes to beneficiary forms. You know, and then looking at, um, maybe you have kids like Al. Right? Where, where or, they're or, irresponsible. Or my, my kids. <laughs> my irresponsible kids. Actually, my kids are great. It's your future kids. Yes, I'm my future about. kids. Yes, exactly. Back to the future. Yes. And here's the biggest one, right? The, the last one was like naming the trust as a beneficiary. Yeah, you huge, know, a lot huge. of people do that. So why is that a problem? Huge mistakes because a trust is an entity. It's not a human being. It does not have life expectancy. All right? So there's we, we could speak for another half an hour just on a, a concept called the stretch. IRA, which it allows the non-spouse beneficiary to stretch out the tax liability over their life expectancy. Let's say you name a trust as the beneficiary. The, what a trust will do, it'll either blow up your IRA or it can you can control the money from the grave. That's what it will do. But in most cases, people do not understand the complexity of naming a trust as the beneficiary of their retirement account. In all cases, name your spouse first if you're married or the people that you wanted to go to. At the very end of your long list of beneficiaries, then you can name the trust. If you want to control the money from the grave and say, you know what, I don't trust these people that are going to get this large sum of money. I want to make sure that I control the distributions. I don't want them to take it all out, pay a bunch of tax and blow it. So I want to make sure that they only get a certain amount each year. You can absolutely do that through a trust, but you want to make sure that you understand the complexity of naming a trust. Because there's it's a whole different ballgame. A trust is an entity. It's not a human being. So there's different things that you have to consider.